Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to once again deal with the Lambert W function. Today we want to find out the radius of convergence for its Taylor series expansion. I didn't do it back then because I didn't really know how to evaluate those um, radii of convergence. But here we are today and we are going to dive right in. We are going to do it two ways. First off is the really really cool and unique way and second way is just here yeah, the ratio test as always. It just uh, work, works wonders with those easy Taylor series expansions. Okay, what's the cool way? Well, at first I would like to take a look at the root test. Meaning, if those are our sequences, a n, we are just going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of this sequence right here and see what we get. Well, I'm going to refer to this limit as just capital L to make things easier for everyone. So this is the nth root of the absolute value. Okay, negative n is nothing uh, to the n minus 1th power is nothing but negative 1 to the n minus 1th power times n to the n minus 1th power. So this is negative 1 to the n minus 1th power times n to the n minus 1th power over n factorial times x to the nth power. Absolute values closed. If we take the absolute value of a negative number, it's just going to be the number itself. So our negative ones are going to vanish. Also, we have the absolute value of those n's right here, but they are element of the natural numbers, meaning those are strictly positive all the time. Meaning we are going to get the limit of the nth root of, well, n to the n minus 1th power over n factorial. So that's already good. We got rid of those absolute values. Our absolute value is multiplicative, meaning we can drag it out a little bit. So that's the absolute value of this chunk times the absolute value of x to the nth power. Also, if we use this property, the absolute value of x to the nth power is the same as the absolute value of x times the absolute value of x times blah 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 n times, meaning it's the same as the absolute value of x to the nth power. And if we take the nth root of, well, the absolute value of x to the nth power is just going to be the absolute value of x. <sighs> there was a lot of talking. And now we are stuck with this thing right here. That's not good. Let's consider this thing right here to be another sequence, bn for example. And there's a certain theorem in calculus that's really easy to prove. Namely, if we have this sequence right here and all those sequence members are strictly positive, they are the element of natural numbers. And if we then take bn plus 1 over bn, this sequence right here, and this converges to a certain value, for example b, then the nth root of bn is going to converge to the same value. Why is this true? Well, if we have strictly positive terms, then we also know that the geometric series, so the nth root of b1 times b2 times blah 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 times bn is going to converge to a certain value. And well, you can easily just advance those parts right here and get the geometric series out of this. And you can see at a glance that this is just true. It's, it's really easy to prove. Maybe I'm going to make a video on that. So our only task is to evaluate this thing right here and see what the limit is going to be. Okay, and those obviously are for n going to infinity. Okay, so what's the ratio of n to the n minus 1th power? Okay, um, b n plus 1, so putting the n plus 1 in here, I'm terribly sorry. So we are going to get n plus 1 to the, okay, this is n minus 1 plus 1, this is just n over, okay, then we get n plus 1 factorial over. Then we have just our regular sequence, so n to the n minus 1 power over n factorial. Let's put this in a little bit different way. So we are going to get n factorial times n plus 1 to the nth power over n plus 1 factorial times n to the n minus 1 power n plus 1 factorial is nothing but n plus 1 times n factorial, meaning this right here is going to cancel out. Then we have n plus 1 and n plus 1 to the nth power. This is nothing but n plus 1 to the negative 1th power. So this is going to give us this right here. So those are cancelling out quite nicely. And now we have nothing but n plus 1 
over n to the n minus 1 of power. I would like to drag this negative 1 of power to the outside, meaning we are going to divide by n plus 1 over n down here. What is n plus 1 over n? Well, it's additive up here in the numerator, so this is n over n, it's just 1 plus 1 over n. So this is 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power, maybe you can already see my smug face, over, okay, same should be down here, 1 plus 1 over n. If we take the limit as n approaches infinity, down here, well, that's just going to be 0, so this is going to be 1. So we are just going to have the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power. And this is something really famous. This right here is nothing but e to the first power. So in the limit as n approaches infinity, this is going to go to e. Meaning, by this little theorem I presented right here, our square root term is also going to go to e in the limit. So this is e times the absolute value of x. And this series only converges absolutely if this thing right here is strictly less than 1. Meaning our radius of convergence, if we just solve for the absolute value of x, is going to be strictly less than 1 over e. Isn't that absolutely exciting? 1 over e just an e popping up. Yeah, this is our radius of convergence. And that's a really unique approach. It's a really nice way to prove this right here. That's also another equivalent formulation for the number e, and that's really quite cool. There are so many definitions for the number e out there. And now for the regular way. I have to admit this last part now is going to be quite redundant because most of the stuff we have to do, we have already done in the steps we did before. But still, I'm going to do it just for the calculus boys out there who want to try out the ratio test a bit more. We are going to take the limit as n approaches infinity, denoted by capital L once again, of a n plus 1 over a n in absolute values. Okay, So we are going to take the limit of a n plus 1 over a n, but in absolute uh, values. This is going to be the limit of the absolute value of. Now it's going to be an absolute mess once again, so this is negative 1 to the okay, n minus 1, plus 1 is just n, so negative 1 to the nth power. Then we have n plus 1 to the nth power times x to the n plus 1 power over n plus 1 factorial over <laughs> here's the absolute mindfuck again this huge complex fraction so negative 1 to the n minus 1 power then we have n to the n minus 1 power over also we have x to the nth power over n factorial everything absolute values once again I'm just going to turn around fractions, take the reciprocals. Also those negative ones are just going to cancel out just like before, just because of the absolute values. And we are going to get the limit of, okay, then we have, I'm just going to write everything out, x to the n plus 1 power times n plus 1 to the nth power times n factorial over n plus 1 factorial x to the nth power and then we have n to the n minus 1 power in absolute values. You might notice that this right here, those x's, are going to cancel out most of the time. So we are just going to have x to the first power up here. Okay? This is just an x. So we can take the multiplicative property and break this up into the limit of the absolute value of x times this chunk right here. Everything is going to be positive once again. So we can just ignore the absolute values. Also n factorial n plus 1 is going to cancel out this factorial. Also we have this 1 over n plus 1 term. So this is going to cancel out. We are going to get n, um, n plus 1 to the n minus 1 power up here. And once again they have the same exponent. So this is going to be n plus 1 over n to the n minus 1 power. And we have discovered this before. In the limit this right here is just going to go to the absolute value of x times e and this is only going to converge absolutely if this is strictly less than 1. Meaning once again that our radius of convergence is 1 over e. Which method did you find more interactive? In my opinion the first one is way cooler than the last one because this is just standard. You have seen this a lot of times on this channel already. I don't want to bother you guys too much with this chunk right here. But still, if you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe, recommend channel if you like, if you want to support channel a bit more.
take a look into the description. There will be links to my spreadsheet shop for German boys, to my Teespring shop, to my subreddit, to my Twitter, to uh, my website whatsoever. Never mind Patreon also. Anyways, I thank you guys for watching. Up until the next video, have a flamble day. I'll see you. Just kidding. Ciao.